Oh, low key. <laughs> it's the low key group. Uh, mass appeal. <coughs> Welcome to the conversation. My name is Shannon Taylor, and our distinguished guest, Rabbi Bernard Rosenberg from Edison has resurfaced, reappeared, and is off in the stomping of all the Apicurus against Israel, Jews, in the wake of the latest terror outrage in Paris. And it's one of the rare instances where the death climbed from 50, 60, 80, 118, 135, 138, 151, 158, and suddenly plummeted to 120. And the wounded were 280 seriously, and suddenly one number 350 something. And I, of course, conclude it's very good that the death toll went down, especially since everybody was prognosticating that the death toll was going to climb ever higher, almost reaching to Mumbai, which had uh, 600 wounded and some, uh, I believe, 300 dead, and was the most similar concerted, coordinated, multi-strike attack with many targets, especially the Chabad house across from the uh, famed hotel. The explosion on the, the Soviet airliner at Sham al -Sheikh, the bombing in Beirut, apparently leading to a conflux of would-be bombings that essentially failed outside the main soccer stadium in Paris. By now everybody's familiar with the blow-by-blows, ending in after half an hour the uh, loss of some 89 people, and worse, in a horrific scene in an uh, auditorium owned Jewishly that had been the scene of many a so-called Zionist concert, and in which on a Friday night it had been almost uh, sold out to a rock type of band from America that had had the audacity to have performed in Tel Aviv uh, some uh, several months before. All of this has outraged some 500 million people in Europe and gotten everybody so excited that they have declared those responsible cancer cells and France is going to a war without mercy. The same France that took in more refugees from Syria than any other nation the same France that has been least favorable towards Israel for so many years, sporadically, although it enticed Israel into a war uh, against the terror from Egypt in the 50s to liberate the Suez, together with England, that Eisenhower, under the misadventures of Dulles, uh, nixed. The same France that always castigated Israel for having been a seeker of too much property, but which got Corsica from one place, and Alsace-Lorraine from Germany, and Burgundy from uh, elsewhere, and Brittany from England, and uh, essentially the whole country is made up of territories from all other nations, uh, uh, and has been one of the most successful colonial empires for hundreds of years. This same France became, uh, of course, involved with the civil war in Algeria that it w wished to keep, and my father was just uh, Michael Taylor, a guest here today, in the south of France at the Pyrenees in Languedoc province, which France got from Spain, at the recent uh, consecration of the Rivesalt Memorial Museum concentration camp, where he and his family were held, and his parents and elder sister were deported to Auschwitz. Now, uh, have the chickens come home to roost? Certainly not. We, we are appalled and, and uh, chagrined and shocked at the absolute total
tragic chaos at concert halls, stadiums, restaurants, cafes, shut up and laid waste by people who themselves have no regard for their own lives and therefore certainly have no regard for any other life and have wasted families and wasted happiness and wasted the, uh, leisure time yet, much less having taken on an entire city that opened its heart and its art to the world. And with that, I, I turn to uh, Bernard, who is an expert in the area, uh, for his comment. Well, a lot of this is uh, coming from liberal professors on the university campuses that are teaching our uh, young people uh, to be anti-Zionist, uh, anti-Israel, and pro-Palestinian, and at the same time they end up being anti-Jewish. Uh, it's also interesting that um, Putin has offered $50 million uh, for someone that has information on the bombing of that airplane. Uh, here in America, we have a uh, president who uh, almost fell asleep at his press conference the other day, reminded me of one of the debates against uh, Romney. Uh, while the uh, French are busy uh, bombing away at uh, ISIS, our president is very concerned about how many uh, soldiers we're going to be sending. And um, I want to tell our president, if uh, anyone can get a message to him, uh, wake up. The world is on fire, Paris is burning, and uh, you're silent. Well, I, I would uh, have quarreled with our previous presidents who allowed us to get into this milieu because uh, I don't recall Gerald Ford being any smarter when he wanted to reassess Israel. I don't recall Jimmy Carter being any kinder when he called Israel an apartheid state. I don't recall George Bush Sr. being any more uh, knowledgeable when he ch changed the government of Israel to one more pliant to himself by having lied forever about the loan guarantees and, and that he had taken out all the scuds, which any one of which 39 could have had a uh, gas attack on Israel in the first Gulf War, and so forth. So on my perspective, this president has, has not done any of those crimes. Uh, that what do you think of, of France having been laid siege to three weeks after your sisters were at the concentration camp memorial uh, from World War II? Just three weeks later. Yeah, it was, a, 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 it was terrible. The situation, uh, uh, they have Moro Moroccan and Algerian, more population than French people. That's the trouble. Do you believe that France was ill-prepared for this attack? Ill-prepared. They, they, uh, they didn't care about anti-Semitism, so uh, they're all very anti-Semite, anti-Israel. Do you believe that the world ignored the same type of atrocities in Israel, and so Israel was a testing ground, and then, then they exported their terror elsewhere? Well, they tried to, uh, to forget about it, to, about the concentration camp until my sisters went to the president and talked about the Rivizalt camp. Your sisters were with the same President Hollande yeah. at the Rivizalt three weeks before this took place, yes. and nobody wished really to hear yeah. about the Jewish horrors uh, under the Vichy French yeah. government. Do you, do you think it not uh, ironic that three weeks later yeah. all of France is subjected to a curfew and to restrictions uh, that they imposed on Jews 70 years before? Yeah, this is uh, incredible. Rabbi? You know what I find interesting? Um, they were reporting on the year uh, is it in Belgium where there's a particular area where most of these uh, uh, tyrants are coming from and they can't control them. That's what they said. They cannot control them. With all their army and uh, all their military, they can't control them. Well, if this was Israel, they would tank, uh, take tanks and roll over that neighborhood, destroy the homes, and then they could control them. So uh, something's very wrong here. And I, and I want to make a comment about what you said earlier. I, I agree with you. This is all about money. This is all about oil. This is all about who's making how much money with regard to armaments. 
So that hasn't uh, changed, whether it's a Republican uh, government or a Democratic government. It's all about the money. Why do you think the, uh, when my father's sisters, Ava and Malka, left Riversalt and went to their original home uh, that was snatched from them without compensation in the intellect, the Jewish section of Brussels, they found the entire Jew former Jewish quarter that had become Christian was now entirely Muslim and Muslim owned. Yes. But is that the trend today? That's our future. Uh, I'm worried about uh, my grandchildren. You know, I just had another grandchild. I have nine. Congratulations. Um, You're mm, prolific. Yes, I, I've, my, mm. my children have done well. Um, I'm very concerned about my grandchildren. What's their future? Uh, the way I see it is that the Muslims are going to take over the world. Now, they, uh, uh, they uh, you know, that everybody wanted to do that except the Jews. Yes. So uh, today on uh, some of the media, I was attacked for my comments with regard to uh, the Muslims. And they were saying how the Muslims are coming out and speaking against uh, ISIS and what happened in France. Uh, well, maybe in English that's what they're doing. I'm not quite certain that the imams are saying that in, uh, in their language. And uh, I would be more than happy to debate any of these liberal Jews who think that our Muslims are our friends. Uh, I'm not saying that they're our enemies. I'm just saying they're just waiting until they have enough people to be in control. If you go into different uh, states, especially New Jersey, uh, you will notice that uh, the Muslims control a lot of the political votes. And when they have enough power, they will control the state. Then they will control the world, and that's how it's going to be. Now, they say it, it's 10% of um, uh, the uh, people who are extreme uh, are, are Muslim, and the rest of them are not. First of all, that's nonsense. But even 10% is a huge number. And uh, I'm telling people, you better start worrying. And uh, if you don't control uh, what's happening now, in the future, you will not be able to control it. I can't imagine anyone wanting to attack you. Why don't you bring them on here for a debate? Everybody is welcome on this show and certainly opposing points of view. Well, here's the irony. I was one of the first rabbis, uh, certainly in New Jersey, to have dialogue with the Muslim population. I defended them. I defended them. And when they were attacked, I as the rabbi and my congregation, we defended them. Then we had an um, interfaith Holocaust program with the same people that I defended. And um, the imam decided that uh, he was going to sit down, uh, both imams, when we did the, the singing of the Hatikva. Uh, that wasn't bad enough. I made an issue of that. Uh, then in the, in the following year, the imam decided, well, he's going to walk out 10 minutes before the singing of the Hatikva. Now, the Hatikva was part of the program. Uh, if you don't want to sing the Hatikva, that's fine. Just stand there and don't do anything. But I learned a lesson. Here I was. Uh, bringing interfaith dialogue, and that was my repayment. So I've learned. You can give them everything you want, and in the end, you'll be sorry. Speaking about the American campus, uh, I uh, just wrote an op-ed uh, for the uh, Jewish Voice, page 19, and uh, I wish to thank the editor, Fern, who uh, is a dear friend for many years, and of course the uh, publisher, David Ben Horn. And uh, we went to uh, the Tufts annual Back to the Future, my alma mater, uh, and uh, heard from many distinguished professors and uh, the president, uh, Tony Monaco. And in the course of, of being at, at that Yale event at the Plaza Hotel, uh, I uh, questioned several of the professors about what's going on on campuses these days, including Tufts with uh, hate fests against Israel, sponsored by uh, euphemistically termed groups as Palestinians for Justice. And I learned that these associate deans and, and vice presidents and so on and so forth themselves believe that's a very good question to ask whether Israel should even exist. <laughs> and in this uh, newspaper, The Jewish Voice, that I uh, recommend in my own opinion, I find out that, that there is a professor, Dr. Nussbaum, at Sanchez Kinto College, uh, who is persecuted for being pro-Israel, as are so many others who are told that Iran is not the threat, Israel is. 
And you can, you can uh, get the paper for yourself and uh, see instilling Jew hatred on America's campuses is a problem that Jews are facing all over. And not just uh, from the Muslim population, but even if they wish to have Israelis come and speak or the Israeli students want to speak in class, here at Columbia University it's an old story that they're openly jeered and harassed and attacked on social media. Swatmore, where this organization, Blacks and Jews, a conversation went in the past, the Hillel director resigned shortly after our visit because all the hatred came out years ago. Years ago, the hatred came out when we espoused a pro-Israel point of view for Jewish students. So, uh, are you familiar with this, Rabbi? Well, I can tell you what happened to me. Now, I've been a professor for over 41 years and never had any problems with any student. All of a sudden, I'm brought up for charges uh, because uh, I said something in class. Uh, by the way, I'm the only one on campus that was wearing a skull cap, uh, male and everyone knew my position with regard to Israel. Um, there was a complaint made, and the way it works is like this. Um, when a student complains, uh, they will not tell you who the student is. And you can't defend yourself because you don't know what you're defending yourself against. So the name of the game now is go after uh, people like myself, make complaints. Uh, the uh, administration is usually pretty liberal, and they're scared to death of uh, being sued. So they'll get rid of the professor before they get rid of the student. And how do I know it was this particular Muslim student? Because I only had one person in that particular class after 26 years of teaching that didn't come back to the second class. And that was the, the lady who was a Muslim and dressed in Muslim uh, outfit. And some of the students told me that she was already griping the first day because uh, I was wearing a skull cap. So this is how the game is being played throughout America. And I predicted that after that happened at the University of Missouri. Uh, what happened at Missouri? When uh, they, they forced the president to uh, resign. Why? And the chancellor to resign. Because 10% of the minority students felt that they weren't uh, uh, doing enough for uh, these 10% black students. Uh, they said that they were being persecuted on campus, etc. It's interesting that the gal who started all this trouble isn't even a student at the University of Missouri, that they said the KKK was on campus. Well, they weren't on campus. And there was a swastika found. Now, what does a swastika have to do with 10% of the black minority? It has to do with the Jewish minority. So all of a sudden now the Hillel was complaining. Why didn't you say anything about the swastika? I had... Three swastikas put on my synagogue. I had 15 swastikas in my town. They haven't caught anybody, and they're not going to catch anybody. So it's nothing new. I grew up in Missouri. So for them to tell me this nonsense, they're talking to the wrong person. Missouri is what it is. We have KK there. We have uh, uh, people who don't like uh, people. We have people who hate Jews. It is what it is. And if you don't like the Midwest, don't go to the Midwest. And all of a sudden, it went to Yale, and then it went to uh, other colleges. And I predict that this disease of trying to take over the colleges will continue. Now, they also want free education. They're demanding free education. So uh, the, the professors won't get paid. And uh, the adjuncts are slaves anyway, and they don't get paid. But they want to make sure that they get free education now. Don't ask me why, but they think this is possible. Years ago, we were scared to death of not showing respect to our teachers. Here they can do what they want. And in fact, it was a uh, professor of communications that went after the media when they went to the uh, uh, University of Missouri, and she threw them out, and then she resigned. So the world is certainly in chaos. Dad, when you were fighting the Nazis and fighting the French in World War II and fighting for independence in Israel, was there ever a question that uh, the world was sympathetic to Jews? Not at all. A hundred percent they, 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 they were uh, participating with Germany to take all the Jews to, to uh, Auschwitz. And was there ever a time when Jews were enemies of France or Germany or, or had ever been an enemy to Arab nations? Were the Jews making trouble for Arabs or Germans or Nazi, French or anything? Yes, uh, the, the Arabs volunteered uh, with Hitler to be the guardian of the, uh, of the concentration camp. 
and they were the worst. They were beaten. When they came out from the train, they were, the Jews were beaten by the uh, Arabs' uh, legion. So nothing has changed? No. The Mufti of Jerusalem, a Muslim, sided with Hitler. Yeah. He was in charge of his own SS brigade of Muslims. You know, they want us to forget this. So I was attacked today in the media. Someone was saying, um, um, uh, you as a child of Holocaust survivors, how can you speak like this? So I replied, well, let's see. Uh, my uh, family was destroyed like, like yours in Auschwitz. Yes. My parents survived. They lost everyone. But... Um, Gee, I, I don't remember um, Jews ever uh, attacking anybody. And I said, gee, it's also interesting that uh, the Muslims have a history of attacking Jews, and you're asking me why I'm upset as a child of Holocaust survivors. I'm just telling you the way it is. Yeah. What about the University of Minnesota? Interestingly enough, there uh, there are reports that they're not going to uh, observe a, a memorial for September uh, 11th uh, because it offends students on campus. Well, they want to do a Christmas too, and uh, you, you know some of these coffee uh, establishments—they've taken away the the Christmas designs. Uh, let me just tell everybody, including Jews, a big secret: this is a Christian society. Christian society. America is based upon Christian values. So if America wants to observe Santa Claus and wants to observe a Christmas tree and wants to observe Merry Christmas, then we should go along with it. What is the problem? We are so politically careful, politically correct, that we are destroying ourselves. But the Muslim population has now demanded their own holidays, even at the expense of our high holidays. So that's how the game is being played. What's good for them is good, and what's good for us is bad. But it's a fact that in the Muslim community, there are almost no voices. There are a few, but almost no voices that are condemning or criticizing what the Muslim hierarchy or populations wish. Whereas in the Jewish community, there is a very vocal, very participatory presence condemning everything that all parts of the Jewish world and the Israeli world want to see done. Well, I, I saw in the media that all these Muslim national groups are condemning uh, what happened in France. That's great. I haven't seen one imam yet on TV. I invited any imam who wants to go on TV with me, including the show tonight. No one took me up on it. So it's one thing to say something on a national scale in writing, and it's another thing to actually speak up and say something and do something. Uh, I made the mistake of doing something. I protected the Muslims. Where are they to protect the Jews? I don't see them. I've had plenty of Muslim guests on this show. Our very first show had the Egyptian doctor that uh, we called a close friend. And we had a wide-ranging discussion. Interestingly enough, eight years ago, he condemned Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Qatar and, and uh, all the other uh, nations uh, as worse, far worse than Israel, although he condemned Israel. Now they're getting their wish. All these nations are under attack by something we see as much worse, but many others in the Muslim community do not. Do you foresee that ISIS is, is going to be in any way uh, vanquished, or they are welcoming these attacks and, and uh, achieving more recruits in the process? ISIS is now getting more recruits, more and more and more, and uh, a fortune of money comes in every single day, multi-multi-millions of dollars, so that they can buy more equipment and uh, arm themselves. I want to make something very clear. Uh, I still will speak out for any Muslim that is discriminated against, I still will fight for Muslim rights. I haven't changed. So let's just understand something. What bothers me is I don't see the Muslim community doing anything for us. Now, I used to go to these Muslim dinners, and I would bring my own kosher meals. And every politician in New Jersey worth their soul would be at these dinners because it looks good. looks great, mm -hmm. right? And at the dinners, they would talk to each other how wonderful it is and how they love you at the United States of America. Great. The minute after the dinner, you don't hear from them. Zero. 
So the politicians are kissing the ass of the Muslims. They want the votes. And by the way, if we bring in these refugees, I know the, the governor of New Jersey just said he doesn't want them in. Uh, I'm telling you right now, you're going to see more bombings. You're going to see more people hurt because they're not uh, vetted enough. Dad, you came to this country after waiting eight months after you married my mother in Israel. And uh, it was because you had been born in Poland, although you grew up in Belgium and was seen as a communist. Was there anybody quarreling about the length of time it took to let you, as a, basically a refugee, mm -hmm. come into America? Anybody saying what a terrible thing it is mm -hmm. not to have let the Jews in uh, by the million and let them die instead? Was there any voice that you remember have, uh, having heard while you were fighting in the resistance in France to let these refugees from Europe in? Well, the, f f the Vichy the government were working uh, with the Germans. When the Germans give order to, to France, take all the Jews to concentration camp, they did. And then they took the French also, the French Jews also to concentration camps. And did you know America was close to you? Yes. And did you know there was no help coming to you? No. And, and essentially then, nobody cared about the millions of Jews and gypsies and gays and Poles and all the others that had no place to escape to. They were the first one to, get, to go to the gas chamber, the, 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 the gypsy and, and the, the, the Spanish Republican, to, and, to and Auschwitz, with women and children and everything. And Britain closed Palestine, Palestine to Jews, yes. but not to Muslims. Not the Muslim, but the, by the way, they close for the the Jews. Very, very uh, uh, British was terrible against Jews. Even Not after the war, they uh, put Jews in concentration. In concentration camp. in uh, uh, at late something. Because they didn't want to see Jews escape to Israel and form a country. Right. No. And, and the whole world was still closed. No, to the Jews. Arabs said to the British to stop the Jews to get into, it. and they were uh, and they were obligated to do that. Even though okay. the Jews had no homes, all their property was stolen from them, yeah. and, and they were children, and they were women, and they were sick, and they were starving, the British, the Americans, closed Israel to them, period. Well, yes. Like uh, the boat St. Louis, there were, there were two, two, 200 ch children, and they said, save the 200 children, and, uh, uh, and Roosevelt refused to let them in. Now, let me tell you, I, I, I'm sure you know, I'm also, 20 seconds. I'm also a refugee. I don't know. Yes, I was born in a, one of those camps, no, a displaced yeah. person camp. So I feel for all these children. Why does the Arab countries not take them in? Why are you sending them to Germany and to France and to the United States? Why? And they have plenty of land, plenty of money, yeah. and, and they're all leaving Syria because their fellows are killing them there in Syria. That is correct. And is the fear justified? Well, thank you very much. Welcome, and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Wonderful. From Blacks and Jews in Conversation. Now you got to shoot.